Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and today we're going to be going over the all-new 2020 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon Eco Diesel. That's the important part, is this is an Eco Diesel Wrangler. I'm super excited to drive this because it has more torque than any other Wrangler from the factory, and it has about the same amount of horsepower, so this should be like the quickest Wrangler. I mean, we'll have to see once I drive it, but this should be insane. But anyways, a huge shout out and thank you to the Larry H. Miller Dodge Ram Jeep Chrysler here in Sandy, Utah for providing us with that Eco Diesel Wrangler. Check out their inventory in the link below and obviously they can custom order you one of these bad boy Eco Diesels. Let's get into the video. Under the hood here, we have a 3-liter V6 diesel engine that goes to an 8-speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy is 22 around town and then 29 on the highway. And then in terms of power outputs, it's 260 horsepower and then 442 foot-pounds of torque. Let's go over the front end here on the Eco Diesel Wrangler. So just like all the other Rubicons, it has the sport hood. So it's got the vents on the top of the hood. Even though they aren't functional, they look cool. Rubicon there on the side. You've got the little LED light here that also doubles as the turn signal. Full LED light lights down there. You've got the fog lights that are integrated into the bumper. This one has the steel bumper group. You can tell by these little rivets. Rubicon do come with the red tow hook. That's another way to tell that it's a Rubicon. Obviously you have that signature grill that comes with every single Jeep ever, pretty much. I mean, look at that. Cherokee and more Wranglers. But yeah, there's one more look at the front end of the Eco Diesel Rubicon. Coming to the side here, we've got 285 70 17 for the tire and rim setup. And then here is all of the suspension that comes with the Rubicon. Now you do get the Jeep logo there on the side. And then here's kind of like a full view on this particular Rubicon Eco Diesel. Now notice that this one has the black top and then the body colored fenders. Kind of an interesting take on it, but I think it looks good. Here's our key fob for the Wrangler Eco Diesel. You still get the little flip out thing just like with all the other Wranglers. It does have the unlock and lock function. And then it says Jeep there on the back with the remote start as well, which we'll do that so you guys can hear what the Eco Diesel sounds like. And you can actually see the suspension back there, which is pretty neat. But yeah, it just sounds like any other Eco Diesel. Press it again and then I'll shut it off. And obviously we'll unlock it so we can get into the rest of the rear. Now here's the door handle in the back and you actually can lock or unlock it with the back door handle, which is pretty neat. Notice it has a key essentially, that's why that keeps blinking at me. But opening this up, it opens up just like any other Jeep Wrangler. Here is the whole trunk interior, I guess I should say. Now there is this little thing you can pick up. You can put all of your um, screws and everything when you take off the top in that little area. You do get extra storage underneath there. This is the other cover that comes with this pick of the Wrangler. All the rubber floor mats are also back here. You get the little 12 volt outlet. And then here's a speaker for the sound system. It is an Alpine unit. And then when you are done, window first. Always remember that, tailgate second, and then you're good to go. Now, finishing things up in the rear, it looks just like any other Wrangler, other than the fact that it has a little Eco Diesel badge on the back. Still got the tire mounted on the rear. Still have the rear view camera in the middle of the tire. Still got the little red tow hook there on the back. This one does have a tow package on top of that, but here's kind of like your three quarters angle on the Eco Diesel Rubicon. Coming to the back here, here is the door panel in the Eco Diesel Rubicon. And all the Rubicons pretty much you get like the red stitching. This one does have leather padding on the side right there. And then here are the seats in the back. Again, that nice red contrasted stitching that's all throughout the interior. Um, the leather itself is actually really durable feeling. And I know that you can actually spray these down if you need to. That's kind of the whole point because you could get the Wrangler super dirty taking the uh, top off. But pulling this little thing down, it's kind of like a cup holder center console type deal for the rear passengers. You get these circular vents in the back, couple window controls, and then you get USBs with a full power outlet. And then we're gonna move that over there because we're gonna pop in. So actually popping in here, step in height's okay. It's a little bit um, high, but putting running boards on a Jeep is kind of funny and defeats part of the off-road capability. But anyways, you get this little mesh in the back of the seat, which is kind of cool. Legroom is actually pretty good back here. Um, headroom, I'm about five foot 11 and I've got quite a bit of space. This one doesn't have the insulation at the top, um, but yeah, I feel like I have a good amount of headroom back here. So it's actually a pretty comfortable place to be in the back of the four door at least. We have keyless entry here on the front. So one touch to lock it, to unlock it, just put your hand on the back of the door handle. It does have blind spot monitoring as well. Now the door panel on the front looks identical to the rear, except this thing just kind of goes to a longer length. You get the unlock and lock in the door and the mirror controls. The door handles are always cool in the Wranglers. 
Here's the seats in the front. They look identical in material to the rear. It says Rubicon though on the side. Um, but yeah, the feel, everything is pretty much the same to the rear. They are manually adjustable just because you can spray water in this, so they can't put power adjustments on the seats. Pedal layout's just down below right there. And then you've got your light controls over here with the fog lights on the side, and then the steering wheel is going to be manually adjustable. You gotta start it up, just put your foot on the brake, push the push start. If the diesel needs to warm up, it'll do the preheat for you. It'll say Rubicon in the center and everything will come to life. Here's the steering wheel on the Eco Diesel Wrangler. Now zooming in, it says Jeep there in the center. This one has all the safety tech, so the adaptive cruise controls right there, that's a regular cruise control. I like the red stitching in the middle of the steering wheel. Again, really soft, smooth leather, leather, not leather, leather. You've got your voice command controls over here with the little controls for the center screen. And then this is obviously the turn signal to do the uh, brights as well. And then the windshield wipers are just on the other side. Here is the center screen. RPM's over there on the left side. On the right side, you've got the speed. And then you've got the little digital screen in the center. Now, the only thing that I could really find that was different from a regular Wrangler is since this is a diesel, you have a little tab there for the diesel exhaust fluid to tell you the percentage on it. Um, everything else though looks just like what every other um, Wrangler Rubicon has in terms of the function on the center screen. Let's see what the fuel economy says so far. 17.3, but again, this has 20 miles on it, so I didn't expect the uh, fuel economy to be accurate at this point. Here is our center screen display. Now we're gonna go over the camera system first. If we put it into reverse, little backup camera will pop up. It's got trajectory lines on it, and then there are parking sensors in the rear, and it kind of shows a little Jeep there on the center screen, which I think is a pretty cool little feature. Now in terms of the rest of the stuff, um, the touchscreen itself, response time on it is actually really solid. And you've got a little controls tab here for your heated seats and heated steering wheel, which it's pretty cold outside, so I've got those on. Sorry, the little plastic actually kind of gets in the way, but I'm gonna let the first owner take that off. Um, but other than that, I mean, you've got the navigation function on it that loads up pretty quickly. You can hear how loud it is with the beeping. The off-road pages are another cool little function. I'm gonna wait for those to load up. While those are loading up, I'm gonna quickly show you this little tab here. So this is all of your controls, like the volume for the radio. You've got your analog controls for the heated seats and heated steering wheel. You've got like your auto stop, start, stability control, and then the dual zone climate, all that stuff. But now that the off-road pages are up, you can see you've got like drivetrain, you've got accessory gauges, and then it shows you pitch and roll, which says I'm at a one degree, which is interesting there because this lot, I guess, isn't perfectly even. But yeah, that's the infotainment system. This is kind of all of the charging stations, I guess. So you've got a bunch of little charging stations on here. The window controls are on the center since you can take the doors off. And then you got a little 12 volt here. Now these are for auxiliary switches. If you ever add any auxiliary items on it, like lights, that's for your sway bar disconnect. That is your front and rear locker or just to lock the rear only. This is your four wheel drive shifter. So you've got your two-wheel high, four-wheel high, neutral, and then four-wheel low. This is the shifter for the eight-speed automatic where you do have a manual shift mode if you wanna shift the gears yourself. The e-brake, which eh, sounds pretty good. I like the red stitching on it. Cup holders are in this little area, which I've got the key in the little key holder area. And then here is the center console going with the red stitching. Picking that up, you got the storage on the space. Or Yeah, I've got little storage there. Anyways, picking the rest of it up. Got more storage underneath, and then you've got the little thing where you can thread a cable through it. Finally, you've got the signature Jeep glove box, which says Wrangler there at the top, and obviously you can grab onto that, and that is all. This whole front part is removable. You just have to move these latches, and then you can pop it off the rest. You do need tools to remove it because it's got a bunch of screws. This part's easy, that part's not, but I mean, it's pretty cool when you just take off this little front part, and the sun visors are very interesting. They have this very, like, just durable, they're just basically plastic and then universal garage door openers are up in that little area. Well, now that we are done going over the interior on this Wrangler Eco Diesel, let's quickly talk about pricing. So, this is the difficult part. This Wrangler Eco Diesel Rubicon with all the features this particular one has, stickers for $63,000 before any type of market adjustment, which, I mean, it's pretty pricey, but the Eco Diesel is most of that added cost. I mean, I think the engine's like, almost five, it's like over $4,000, it's not quite $5,000, it's over $4,000 to add that Eco Diesel engine, so it's a pretty expensive option. But that all being said, let's take this Eco Diesel Rubicon out, see how it drives.
before we set off here in the Wrangler Rubicon Eco Diesel, let's talk about the visibility throughout it. Visibility of the hood, again, it's gonna be like just like any other Wrangler. I like how you can see those vents though. It's a really cool look over the hood. Visibility through visibility through both the mirrors is pretty decent. So you can see that mirror there. And then you mirror on the other side, like I said, this one has blind spot monitoring. Now visibility th all throughout the rear, it's got a bunch of giant square windows. So it's actually really easy to see out of just all around the Wrangler. And let's set off. Um, first thing I'm gonna notice is Believe it or not, just barely setting off here, I can already notice the torque because it just, it crawls pretty well. Like it just gets up and goes just like boom, instantly off of the line. And that kind of reminds me, I forgot to mention this does have a hill descent control. So um, my bad for not mentioning that earlier. Crawling, hill descent control. Yeah, you know, that's how I kind of came to that conclusion right there. Steering on it's just like any other Wrangler. Wow, that slows down really quickly. When you let off the throttle, it just slows down. Like you definitely can tell it's a diesel just from how it slows down when you take your foot off the throttle. And initially saying off here, this is, this is a weird feeling. It is really strange to drive a Wrangler that has a diesel engine because normally I'm used to having to ring out the engine a little bit. That's just most Wranglers. But this, I mean, it's just, I, it just goes and you drive it differently than a regular Wrangler because this has so much torque. You kind of just ride on that wave of torque. Yeah, and it goes through the gears really quickly. It just constantly stays in that power band where it has a lot of torque. This is, this is phenomenal. This is probably the best Wrangler that I have ever driven. Obviously this new JL series is amazing, but yeah, that diesel engine is paired perfectly with this. Taking a little turn here. It's got that same kind of vagueness that any other Wrangler has, but I mean, it's an off-road SUV. You're not really looking for this to be super sports car direct. However, with the tires that this one has, this one doesn't really do all that kind of like floating around like some Jeeps do when you lift them and put bigger tires. But yeah, the engine really is the uh, star of this so far. I'm taking another turn here. The thing I love about Wranglers is they're really easy to maneuver. Like it's just, it's such a small vehicle that it's just easy to go around corners. And so you can imagine how it's going to benefit you when you are on the off road. We are going to officially get our acceleration here with this eco diesel Wrangler. Well, we've got to kind of get out of the way of this little trailer here. That is quick. That is actually quick for a Wrangler. I, I am surprised like Wranglers aren't supposed to be fast vehicles and no, this isn't like crazy fast by any means, but this has power. Like this has power that you don't normally get with a Wrangler. I mean, it has so much torque and yes, there is a little bit of turbo lag. I mean, you're going to get that with any turbocharged engine and I mean, pretty much every single diesel engine on the market nowadays is turbocharged. So yeah, diesels are going to be kind of synonymous with turbo lag, but man, that has good torque. Like I am very impressed with this Eco Diesel Wrangler. I just, I can't even imagine taking this on the off-road because it has so much low end torque that I bet you could just crawl over everything, no problem. And yeah, this is, this is a cool engine. It's kind of, it's kind of tempting me. Hmm. That is gonna sum things up for our video on this 2020 Jeep Wrangler Eco Diesel Rubicon. Yeah, lots of words and stuff. But anyways, again, a huge shout out and thank you to Larry H. Miller Dodge Ram Jeep Chrysler here in Sandy, Utah for providing us with that Wrangler Eco Diesel. Definitely check out their inventory in the link below if you're in the market for a Dodge Ram Jeep or Chrysler. If you're stopping for the first time, please subscribe. I will see all of you in that next video.